I think that's it for the new Linkin Park song. And uh, I have something else that I plan to do as well. Because obviously that only took like 20-ish minutes. Uh, so, so. The other thing I want to talk about is a band. Uh, one that I knew when I was in high school. I found their music by chance. Uh, I am pretty likely one of a very small number of people that at least once owned their album. Their first album, anyways. Uh, they came out in uh, 1996. They're an all-girl band. And at the time they started, they were around 15, 16 years old. Uh, that band would be called Kitty. Originally started by two friends who met in school. Uh, who then got the one girl's sister into the band to be their, like, second guitarist and uh, singer. They were still in school when their first album came out, and uh, they had lucked basically into getting a record contract early. Uh, they also, by the way, have a lot in common with Linkin Park for one reason. They're both considered new metal. Or at least were. <laughs> I'm not sure if either band is still considered new metal, but back when they started, they were both new metal. Uh, ironically, if you look at, like, who were their influences, uh, Kitty's main influences were Silver, Chair, Alice in Chains, and Nirvana. But uh, then they added in aspects of corn, deftones, and uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce the Brazilian band. <laughs> My classic band. But uh, yeah, I think they're probably really only known for their first CD. Or album, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they're from Canada, by the way. Uh, but, yeah. Their, their first record was called Spit. <laughs> yes, they were very edgy. I mean, they were like 15. So, well, I mean, the one older sister, I think, was maybe 17 at the time. Uh, but the... The two core girls uh, that started everything were like 15, so. But yeah, they got their, well, the one's older sister in. And then they found a bassist. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it was quite the little collection. Um. Why don't, why don't I play their probably most well-known song, which is called Brackish. So, let me fire that up. Uh, oh, here it is. There aren't too many songs from them, at least that I can find. I know they have a lot more, but let's, uh, let's play it.
say Look at your face, scarred in dismay But times have changed, and so have you I think I'd rather bruise it tell they're new metal. They have that mix of uh, an ironic this tragic story of Kitty is uh, one of the videos that pop up in my YouTube feed after watching this. <sighs> but uh, <clears throat> you can tell from that that they mix a lot of uh, like, softer and harsher vocals. And, uh, you can probably guess my parents weren't thrilled with, uh, my choice of music when I was playing this in high school. <laughs> uh, I, I believe I recall them calling this noise. <laughs> but, uh, that was probably... Their most well-known song. Uh, though it's one of two songs from that time period that would end up getting uh, official music videos. Uh, the other one was Charlotte, and uh, I will play that shortly. But, uh... Unfortunately... They got a lot of negative feedback. Mostly from being women in the, like, new metal scene all the way back in, like, the late 90s. Uh, which is actually why I'm going to say a lot of, like, bands like The Warning and uh, basically a lot of, like, female-focused, like, rock bands now owe a lot to Kitty. Because uh, they were one of the first, at least initially, well-known bands that uh, pushed into what, at the time, was a mostly male-dominated space. Uh, if you're a woman, the, like, record companies wanted to push you into being, like, the next Madonna. Uh, it's the same sort of time period as, like, Avril Lavigne and uh, that sort. 
Not that I have anything against Avril Lavigne, but uh, very different music. Very different music. So Kitty was basically the opposite. They're, they're more punk than just about anything else. Uh, I think you can understand why they had a lot of grunge influence now. Hopefully. Uh, also, obviously, a lot of... Uh, how do I want to put it? Uh, well, let me just say they're, they're punk metal, metal punk, whatever you would like to call that. <laughs> I believe people just called it new metal back in the day. Uh, and, like, slapped it in with, like, Lincoln Park, which I don't... Only the combination of, like, softer and harsher vocals... Uh, is really at all like Lincoln Park. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, there was a lot of negative things that happened to Kitty. Uh, they weren't treated very well at all initially. Uh, a lot of promoters and clubs and even media were very hostile to them, as well as audiences. Uh, when they first started, and remember, they're, they're still teenagers when they first started. They had a lot of crowds where the guys would say things like, take off your clothes, as if this is some sort of, like, uh, strip club or something. I don't know. I don't know what they expected. Uh, it actually led to them wearing a lot of more punk type clothes with lots of spikes. Just to look less friendly. Uh, also, their themes, even though they had a lot of, like, media loved to call them, like, Uh, girls who were using sex appeal to sell their music. But if you actually listen to their music, it's all about uh, defeating misogyny. Um, oh, there's a lot of other topics, too. Uh, one of their songs, by the way, reminds me a lot of Narcissista. From the warning, not in, like, melody or composition, but in theme. Uh, it was all about how people, in fact, I think the name of the song, let me double check so I'm not saying this wrong. Give me the track titles. Yeah. Their song, Do You Think I'm a Whore? Uh, was basically all about, like, people thinking they're, like, sluts or something like that. And uh, basically telling them off and where they can go with that idea. Uh, they also, by the way, also have a lot of similarity with, uh, at least in track names, with uh, The Warning, because they have a song called Choke. The songs are obviously very different, but I think it's funny that they both have a song with the same name. Uh, they have a lot of other themes in here, too, but they're very like, girl-centric for theme. Basically, topics, especially when I was, you know, a high school girl, that uh, 
I could understand and, uh, like, have, like, solid ideas about, because they were things that affected me. Uh, why don't I play Charlotte for you? Also from the first album. do not understand the video, but I do understand the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Those are two of their songs from the first CD. But, uh, things did not go well for the band. Uh, the first thing to happen was they lost the original bassist and they had to get a replacement uh, just before going on tour. Uh, they had 
issues with their label that they signed to. Uh, they did, in 2001, come out with a second album. Though, uh, it's a lot harsher than the original. In fact, uh, a lot of people call it death metal or thrash metal. Uh, so yeah, uh, not so much like their first songs. And a lot of people don't think that anything they made after was nearly as good as their original stuff. That sort of flowed from there. At this point, I think the only original two in the band uh, are the two sisters. Uh, the other mainstay, uh, Fallon Bowman, is, uh, I think, parted way at this point, and they did a, like, solo career I want to say in like 2005. <laughs> I'm not sure for sure. But yeah, the, the roster is definitely not the same as you can sort of see. If you can see that picture up there. This is them in 2022. I think you might be able to identify the two sisters. They do look very similar. Uh, I think more so now than they used to. But, yeah. Uh, I do have one other song from them. which is from 2010, because uh, I've been using their YouTube channel, and their YouTube channel doesn't have a lot of content. <laughs> it does have some, like, clips for a documentary they did, which was, like, six years ago now, or even... Nine years ago, depending. Yeah, it's not updated regularly either, which makes it even harder. But, uh... Should we be safe and go with the clean version of the song? Sure, why not? Why not? We'll do the clean version. All from like the agent. So quality's gonna suck. Video one.
you can see. They're they're definitely like metal now. I'm not even sure I would call it rock per se, but definitely metal. And uh yeah, that's at least them in 2010. At least they're not so much thrash metal in that. I'm okay with a little bit of thrash metal, but it's not my main category. Uh, so, I'm glad that is not what uh, that particular song is. But uh, those three are about the only music videos on their YouTube channel. Everything else is like behind the scenes sort of content or promotional in nature. As you can imagine, by the way, they have actually been at Wacken. Uh, I don't think that happened until much later. I don't even think this gives any info on when it happened. So. Yeah. They did actually release a new album last year. I have zero ideas how that's gone because I have not seen anything from it. So I don't know. But I can say as far as the band goes that every all-female band in the rock scene in a way owes them because they were there first. They were all you know teenagers and the only girls in the scene, basically, at the time. I think it would be, like, years before we got another, like, all-female, like, rock band on the harder side of things. So, hugely influential. Uh, just... That first CD, uh, Spit, is still known as one of the most influential new metal albums ever made. And it actually didn't sell all that great, which is crazy. I owned a copy, though. I owned a copy. Sadly, I don't have it anymore. I don't know what happened to it, but it disappeared somewhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. As it says here, lyrical themes include sexism, hatred, ignorance, betrayal, bullying, and life experiences. So, you can understand why, as a girl in that era, uh, and a teenager nonetheless, literally everything they did definitely resonated with me. But... Yeah, they were one of those original bands. Obviously, they also fell apart because of a lot of the issues that they faced. And that's always sad when that happens to a band, especially when you like. But I don't think, I don't think it could have really gone any other way back in the day. Yeah, I, I just, it's ironic that they had so many issues with sexism when that is actually something that they sang against. Uh, I actually also recall a story where uh, the lead singer, uh, whose name is escaping me, and I'd have to go back to the other one to actually remember. I will. I'll go back so I can say her name. Morgan. I think it's Morgan. It was either Morgan or Mercedes. They're the Lander sisters. Uh, one of the two actually got 
attacked on stage by someone in the crowd. Some guy, actually. I don't think we know who. Uh, but yeah, they were actually on tour at the time and were uh, an opening act. And one guy in the crowd got so pissed off, I guess, that he like leaped over the barriers, jumped on stage, and like decked. Uh, I want to say it was Mercedes, but I'm not sure if it was Morgan or Mercedes. One of the two. One of the two. He just like decked her. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that is not so much a thing anymore. Uh, I mean, first of all, we now have a lot more security than we did in the old days. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, that also wouldn't fly in most of Europe. Like, Wacken, if you did that at Wacken, the rest of the crowd would beat your ass down. <laughs> I don't know why it's such a thing in the U.S. Well, I have ideas, but I'm not going to say those out loud. But, uh, yeah. One of the most influential in the first all-girl bands with one of the most influential, like, albums from a girl band. Uh, so if you didn't know about Kitty... You should now know about Kitty. I think that's all I have for them, though. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that may be all I have. At least for today. Uh, since this is a Thursday... I'm probably going to take Frida off uh, and get things prepped. I have another reaction episode for Saturday with uh, Miasmic Blight. We're going to do some more introduction to the warning. A lot of fun things in there. Uh, I need to go edit the stream into some videos, so... Why don't I find someone to raid? Oh, uh, I'll also throw this in here. If you haven't seen it yet, on YouTube, I finally got to 500 subscribers. Uh, that is the point on YouTube where you can get monetized and uh, you can do memberships. Uh, all the other things, basically, that I have here on Twitch will now, well, not quite yet. I, I gotta get my channel reviewed. But soon, soon, I can actually get, like, memberships and, uh, like, if people want to do super chats and that sort of thing, they can, uh, I'll have... The same sort of, like, emotes and things from Twitch over on YouTube once uh, everything goes through. I hope that's a lot of fun. I have been trying for a long time to get Twitch and YouTube to be both equally monetized. And then I can start doing uh, some streams on YouTube that might be more favorable there than they are on Twitch. Or even do, like, dual streaming. I didn't want to do that until the two were even. Because if they're not even, there's not a heck of a lot of point. Uh, since your audience is, like, fragmented. But now that the two are equal, or at least soon will be, I can do whatever I feel like. Let me go and choose someone to raid. I think. 
think we'll raid Boca. Well, I basically already told you what the plan is. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to take off. Uh, back on Saturday for more Introducing the Warning. And Sunday, hopefully, slash, hopefully. That is my plan. Uh, I think that's it. So, with that, have fun, take care, and see you later. Bye.